Hey guys, uh, welcome back. We uh, are here with another video about the Monport GA30 MOPA fiber laser. If you saw the previous video, we uh, did an unboxing on this. Showed just how easy this thing was to take straight out of the crate and set up and get running. So first what we're going to do is we are going to focus on the back of the machine. Uh, there's really only a few connections to this machine. It's very easily accessed and laid out very well. You have your main power cable that comes in, plugs right into a standard wall outlet, um, and it is uh, turned on by the green main power switch that you will see right below it. You will need to have this switch turned on before you can operate the laser. Uh, also wanted to talk about the USB cable uh, over here on the left side. This is the data transfer cable. Very similar to older printer styles uh, for, for data transfer. You will find that it is recessed into the machine and this is designed this way to protect the connector from dust particulate and residue that can come off of this laser. Uh, but it, if this cable ever was disconnected, um, you know, it could interrupt your progress on your job. Next thing we're gonna point out is the rotary attachment connector. Uh, this will allow you to do cups, tumblers, pins, different things like that. It's actually a very secure connection. It's got a screw on connector. So you can unscrew it here and look at it. It is your standard four pin connection. It goes right in there and that ring screws it on to secure it. There are a couple other connections here on the back um, that we will not be using. Uh, you can see where the laser actually uh, laser tube comes into the machine. You don't really want to mess with that at all. Then you get your fan on the other side. The other end of that rotary cable is the rotary itself. Uh, I have right up here. This is purchased from Momport as well. And now as we move to the front of the machine, you will see a few different buttons. Of course, uh, to start off with, you have your main power switch. This has to be turned on uh, in addition to the switch on the back, and uh, it sets really nice and flush with the bezel around it. You also have your manual focus buttons for down and up, as well as your autofocus button. You push this autofocus button and the machine will focus automatically. You also have your foot switch uh, this stands out and feels a little bit different than the power switch. Uh, it's actually meant for batching jobs and repeating your last job, whatever you have set up in Lightburn or EasyCAD. Definitely has a different feel to it. Uh, I would think that it would have been a little bit better design if this was relocated um, away from directly underneath the uh, power switch, maybe over to the side so you don't accidentally hit that power switch whenever you're trying to do some batching of jobs. All right, so we are now going to set up your machine in the Lightburn software. So naturally, what you're going to want to do is make sure that you have installed Lightburn onto your computer uh, before proceeding with the following steps. Another thing we want to be sure of is uh, you have your USB drive that Monport's provided for you. Uh, be sure that's plugged in and connected to the PC. If by chance you have lost this USB drive, Monport will email you these files directly. So the first thing that we're gonna do is click on devices. Uh, you can see my device is already here. Uh, you will not have this as this is my current machine. Uh, your screen should be blank. So what you're gonna go do is create manually. Here you wanna scroll down to JCZ Fiber and click next. Make sure that your USB drive is accessible and uh, click on import EasyCAD config. This will open up a new window and uh, you will navigate to that folder and find EasyCAD Lite. Double click on that, go to the plug folder and double click on that. Here's where you will click on Mark CFG7, not CFG0, uh, and hit open. This imports all of the settings for this laser and click next. 
Here's where you will want to name your laser, whatever you want it to be. Name your laser and confirm that your marking dimensions are 175 by 175, as that's the size of this laser, and then click Next. Now, uh, just verify that this is all correct, and then click Finish. Here you can see your newly named laser listed in the available devices. Click OK.